So hey guys, it's Alex here for TechFlow and I thought I would do a video where we sit down and have a bit of a chill one where we talk about some of the tech that has excited me over the last year. We could even say through lockdown, things that I have been using in my personal life to do things like listen to music, clean my house. This list varies from some things that are really expensive to some things that are kind of inexpensive and a little bit DIY. So yeah, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get straight into the tech that I've been using using this year. So no particular order, welcome to my gym. This is a Raspberry Pi version 4. You can pick these up on Amazon for around 30 to 40 pounds here in the UK. But before you go ahead and pick one of these up, just go ahead and look online at the vast majority of things that you can do with these things. Essentially they have a micro SD card slot in the side of them as to which you can load up with some software, any software. These things can record your CCTV all the way to be a Spotify streamer, which is actually what I use mine for in the garage. Obviously gyms have been closed throughout this coronavirus period so I converted my garage into a gym which is where we are now and this has been playing all of my music via some speakers that I mounted on the walls streaming from Spotify. Now it takes it even further. This has Wi-Fi and Ethernet built in so that's how it can get its internet signal and then it has USB ports on it which means you can actually connect a DAC or digital to analog converter which is going to get you some great sound quality out of your speakers. Really, really recommend these Raspberry Pis. If you want to pick one up, just make sure it's going to do what you want it to do. Search online, find some software, and then have some fun and put this together. This is really, really cool and something that saved my bacon throughout coronavirus. Don't think I really need to say much more, do I? This is the Achi M1 Infinite projector. Now this is a really, really cool device. Yes, expensive, and we've got a more dedicated video coming on this very shortly, so hit subscribe for that, but this is insane. Essentially what we've got here is, I wanna say about a 60 inch projection on my countertop that I can go ahead and interact with because this thing, which is the actual projector, projecting the image, has cameras in it, so it knows exactly where I'm tapping on my sideboard and then can try translate that to the Android experience, which this thing runs. This thing is so, 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 so cool. When people come over, I show them it and it just blows their minds. And not only that, because this is essentially what's called a short throw projector, because the image is so big with it being so close to the projector, if you place it this way, you can actually have up to a 100 inch image on your wall. So it's a portable projector that's battery powered and can also be a gimmick and a huge touchscreen on your sideboard. We do have a dedicated review of this product coming soon, so like I say, there's a lot and we are only just scratching the surface here, so make sure you hit that bell button to be notified for when that video comes out, because this thing is a head turner and it's so, 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 so cool. Okay, so welcome to the lovely cabin of my BMW M2 competition to talk about this RAV Power battery bank. Now this is a little bit different to most battery banks. Well, we'll get into that in a second, but it's actually got 20,000 milliamp hour capacity, which if you didn't know or were living under a rock, that will be able to charge like a full on laptop twice, your mobile phone about 30 to 40 times over and over again. This thing is a bit of a beast, but it's not why I like it. The main reason why I like it is because as well as having USB and USB-C, it has a full-size British plug. Just having this in my gear arsenal has helped me so much. More so recently, in fact, when I've been actually out flying my FPV drones, this has allowed me to charge, yes, charge my FPV camera batteries when I'm out in the field from the boot of my car. So I can actually put some more juice in my FPV batteries from this just by having this DC output. 
It has a really simple rubbery feel to it. If you click the button on the top, you actually get a battery indicator so you can see what's going on. I have charged, I think, three or four of my racing drone batteries consecutively and still not being able to drain this thing. And also this is great for when you're working on set and you wanna bring your studio lights with you. Studio lights that plug into the mains, obviously. Well, you don't need a mains outlet anymore because you've got one that's in this little tube. This comes in at just under 100 pounds here in the UK. I think it's invaluable and I'll leave those links in the description. So this down here is the Dyson 360 Heurist and I've had this in my life but I want to say the past three or so months now replacing I would want to say some more dumb robot vacuums. The reason why I use the word dumb is because this Dyson vacuum is smart in the sense that it knows where it is around your house because of this, and you may have spied it, 360 camera around the top of it. The main reason it has a 360 camera around the top is so the robot can see where it is and see its dock via these two markers here, which is something that I actually don't like about this robot vacuum, the fact that the dock is so large, but the camera enables it to do things like completely map out your house house so when you first get this the robot is actually going to explore your house without the vacuum on so it can know where it is and then you go ahead and tell it and divide up all of the rooms now the reason why you're going to do this is so you can say hey Dyson vacuum go and clean my office or hey Dyson vacuum go and clean the kitchen for me or the downstairs toilet because it's mapped out the house with its camera and it knows where these places are it can then go and do that and you can also set up schedules so so on a Tuesday you can clean the office and on a Monday you can clean the kitchen, so on and so forth. One main problem after using portable vacuums or robot vacuums for the past four or five years, I've noticed that they get stuck on things when they're not smart. Another reason as to why I really like this vacuum and I still use it to this day is because of that camera system, because it's mapped out the house, you can set things like no brush bar zones so it won't use its brush bar in certain areas of the house. You can select complete no-go zones, so if in your kitchen you're quite a wet, messy person and you've always got water on the floor, you don't want this thing going through all the water, so you can set the kitchen as a no-go zone, and you can also set up no-climb zones, so if you've got a corner of the room where you've got loads of cables, for example, you can tell it not to climb in this part of the room and it won't go ahead and get itself stuck in a position. The reason why I really like this is because most of the cleans that I send it on, it ends up back in its dock. And I can't say that for the majority of other robot vacuums that I've tried. They always end up getting lost, stuck, and don't do a great job of cleaning. Above all, because it has a brush bar installed, even my carpets are super, super clean. Okay, so this is one thing that I came across and I think it's for a certain type of individual. That type of individual is the type that owns one of these Apple Watches, which is quite a lot of people, I think. This is really, really cool. As the world starts to hopefully open back up again, I think this portable Apple Watch charger is absolutely genius because it's so, 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 so simple. In my eyes, less is more. So it has a USB-C on the side of it, which means it can pretty much just plug into your laptop or even your iPad or even your phone if it can support reverse charging and then you go ahead and you take your Apple Watch off, plonk it straight on here and just like that, off you go, your Apple Watch is charging. Really, really simple but really, really cool. I mean this thing looks insane on the side of the laptop and it works. It's an Apple Watch charger and I think these things actually charge so quick. So in about 20 minutes you've got yourself 100% of battery. So let's say you sat on a train for example, you can go ahead, plop this on there for a few hours and off you go. You're fully charged, ready for a few days of work with your watch. If you're out and about working or on holiday or whatever, I think if you're an Apple Watch user and you wear them on the daily, one of these is invaluable. I've been using it and I'll put those links in the description. But other than that, thanks to you guys for watching this video. And if you liked it, please hit us with a thumbs up. This is a little bit of a spin on our usual top five series where we try to find cool tech on Amazon and bring it to you. This is more of a personalized edition of that, things that I've actually been using and had a value of in my life in 2020. So hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more like this, let us know in the comments. But for now, we need to thank today's sponsor, as usual, Squarespace. 
Now the folks over at Squarespace are awesome because they allow you to create a website, but not only that, they take care of all the hard things that usually come along with creating a website, like doing things like securing the domain, which is your name of your website that people will type in to find you. On the screen, you can see some examples of some of the websites that we've been working on here at TechFlow. And as you can see, they look absolutely stunning. These are all using the new templates that Squarespace have installed, and they're always updating and changing these, which is really, really cool. And you could do the template stuff, but if you do want to go into the back end and change things, add HTML, you can do. It's all there with Squarespace. They've got things installed like SEO, which if you don't know, essentially you can go in and see how your website is appearing on search engines like Google to make sure people are actually finding you. And it really is a three-step process. You choose the templates that you want, you upload your own images, and then you make it live. If you guys would like to save 10% on your first Squarespace purchase and also help TechFlow out at the same time, please use our code TechFlow at checkout to save 10% or go to squarespace.com forward slash TechFlow. But that's been it. That's been it from Squarespace 2. And guys, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. Thank you.